should be showing us the, the agenda. It is showing the agenda now, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to scroll down. Sorry, say that again. Should we want to go back a slide and then backwards to the agenda? No, no, no. We'll start. We'll start with the. We'll start from the agenda. So, going to go through the mitigation on program, VRQs, MQs, mitigation for EPA support. We'll have the Q and A sessions, uh, and then also what what is happening next. Um, I'm going to leave it like this. I know it looks a bit odd, um, but I am going to leave it like this uh, and just move down the slides rather than. Um, what time I try to get it into presentation mode, uh, what have you. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, uh, the, we've spoken with various regulators, England, Northern Ireland, Wales and Scotland, uh, and we are uh, including some products uh, for Ireland. That's not just in the digital space, by the way, that also does include um, products in other industry sectors. The overarching aim is to allow as many learners as possible that were due to complete achieve by this by this summer to get through to receive their results and either progress on to further education employment without delay. Now there are uh, some uh, caveats to that um, because of certain things that you may or may not be doing. So we have had people um, who've started short award programs uh, in mid March or at the beginning of March. There's also the on program qualifications uh, that don't quite fit into some of the rules uh, around how to do this. Um, so we are allowing people who are doing short programs that would only take two or three months um, and started this year to carry on and use the mitigation. And the same is true for those people who are doing the on program qualifications for apprenticeships. So scope of learners, um, if you are doing the uh, credit based qualifications, so that's what we would normally call the RQs or MVQs, then it is those learners that were on program but were incomplete um, and registered prior to the 20th of March 2020. Um, and those that were due to be complete uh, and finished qualifications and assessment by the 31st of July. Uh, now, as I've said, there are a couple of uh, exceptions to that. Um, so we're looking for them to have completed a learning program that addresses a significant proportion of the content of the qualification. In many cases, in uh, and many sectors, we've put that 70% However, in the digital space, we put it at 65 because we know that some level three and level two uh, MVQs and VRQs only take six units to complete to get the relevant credit. Uh, and many centers may well have done four units by March, so they'll have to do so. You know, they'll have completed two thirds and have a third. So that's why we lowered it in the digital space to 65%. Obviously, if your learners don't fall into this category, um, then you know we ask you to carry on doing what I'm sure you are, uh, which is you know continuing to help them with learning, doing remote support, etc., wherever that is possible. So let's have a look at the assessment and mitigation for the digital skills sector. You need to be uh, downloading the assessment mitigation center guidance for MVQs and VRQs uh, for summer 2020 digital and IT document. Don't just go on the spreadsheet that is the first thing that you come across on the mitigation page. Please open the document itself. It has a lot more detail. It tells you exactly what units um, have mitigation against them and which qualifications have mitigation against them in full. There are four types of mitigation possible. 
calculated adaptation delay or no mitigation and i'll start with no mitigation it says exact it means exactly what it says on the tin um, that assess normal assessment processes can continue it doesn't involve anything uh, whereby we have to do any sort of social distancing or anything of that nature we don't have any of those in in the digital area uh, then there is delay Again, it means exactly what it says. Um, it isn't possible to carry on with any sort of assessment at the moment, um, and therefore uh, you will have to put that on hold. It mainly affects things like uh, the single subject qualifications, um, where there is an exam where we would have to send out exam papers, because clearly those would have to go out to the center. People aren't going into centers. You've then got to try and distribute them. Those papers to be done in an invigilated exam environment so it's not possible to do those so those would be on delay calculate results uh, i'm going to say a bit more about some of the qualifications that will fall into that for digital the main ones that fall into that will be our technical classroom qualifications so those are the technicals the 5220 products uh, and it's around uh, the exams that some of the learners may not have been able to take. They may be able to complete synoptic projects, um, but we are asking uh, for calculated results for the exam side. Now, those results have got to be with us by the 26th of June, and you have to use the calculated assessment guide tool, of which in this presentation there is a link, and we will send the presentation out after this session to everybody on the call to make sure that you've got all the links that we talk about. So, uh, just to start off, credit by products of VRQs and VQs, uh, a decision was made a couple of weeks ago that for level one and also for big qualifications that we would move those to calculated so uh, uh, less any sector including one or two in the digital area where it specific specifically states that you can use other forms of mitigation so the only other form that we use in digital is adaptation uh, Again, you know, the results have to be entered using the calculated assessment grade tool. Uh, and here you will see the link, which you will get when you receive the presentation. The presentation will also go up uh, onto our updates and webinar uh, page as well. Uh, and I have links within the presentation of how you can get to those. Level two and above, uh, what we're looking for is either a witness testimony or short report from the employer or the training provider to show that they have evidence that does cover the knowledge outcomes uh, and also in terms of the VRQs and MVQs, practical outcomes. So they've seen evidence of them doing work wherever there's a practical element. You will then need to fill in gaps using Q&A professional discussion and also use that to verify the knowledge has actually sunk in as it were um, and you'll find the detail and what is acceptable uh, in the mitigation document that I've, that I've just shown uh, and the link to that is shown here you do not need to upload any of that evidence to us you need to keep that you need to keep it for around about three years because obviously we will send in uh, an external quality uh, assessor and when i say send in um, it could be electronically it could be a remote assessment it won't necessarily be a person people doing uh, apprenticeship standards in terms of mitigation it is adapt um, but we are allowing for on program two methods of adaptation so you can reuse remote invigilation and you can use or you can use uh, the short report um, format with either witness testament or on the provide to show that they have got the knowledge or the outcomes of the standard and do the professional discussion 
to round it off and fill in gaps. Again, stated if you use the second of these adaptations, then you will again have to use the calculate uh, calculate tool to input your result. Obviously, if you use remote invigilation, it's using the evolve test, uh, and therefore the result is automatically put in. But because of that, we have to force the entry in if other methods are used. What we've tried to do and what I have personally championed in trying to do is to offer those people doing apprenticeships the, the most accessible and easiest method that can be used with the apprentices and with your own staff. We recognize that there are issues where uh, in a household, there might be uh, parents that are working, there's only one laptop available or only a couple of mobile phones. And when you check out the guidance, what you've got to do around remote invigilation, you'll see that, you know, you need two pieces of equipment. So if other people are using it or there are siblings doing school uh, home learning, um, it's not always possible to do that. Equally, your own staff. Uh, their equipment or their resources, their Wi-Fi may not be brilliant. They may live in a remote area and all of those issues needed to be taken into place. So we are allowing both uh, because we were asked um, for remote invigilation, but also um, I wanted to make sure that no apprentices were disadvantaged um, by allowing the second option. Um, and I'd like to do a shout out to Wiltshire College. They may not be on on the call and also to BT who've embraced these um, adaptations and are well on the way to getting some of their learners completed both under the VRQ and under uh, the on program standard. So using mitigation you still need to go through an internal quality assurance process so you do need to make sure you're doing all the standardizations that you would normally do, making sure that you have identified the appropriate adaptation for your uh, learners. Um, so if it's the on-program side for apprenticeship standards, that remote invigilation is the right way to go or is appropriate or can be done um, and the technology will stand up to it um, or that your tutors are, are able to do that. Obviously, uh, applying risk-based sampling approach on the principles of camera, um, appropriate assessment methods are selected in line with the adaptation requirements. Um, clearly, if you're doing VRQs, MVQs, you don't have a choice. It is do uh, the witness testimony or the uh, tutor report and the Q&A. Uh, but, you know, we are looking for my QA to sign on this being uh, and that you are meeting the policies and procedures uh, and any legislation requirements, uh, both from us and external regulatory. There is a step-by-step -step guide uh, of how to go through this. Uh, I'm not going to read all of these out. Um, you will be able to read these when you get them, but briefly, it's identifying the learners that are eligible and then what you're going to do with them. It's auditing the work that they've already done to check what evidence you already have so that you know what things you need to put in place uh, and also uh, what the professional discussion or Q&A needs to be like. Um, and then uh, using those methods um, and working with your apprentices to complete the work. Um, doing the IQ bit internally, putting the result. Now, in terms of results of IQs and MVQs, um, while we have originally said you need those results to us by the 31st of July, we are extending that to the 30th of September. However, do need to let us know that you are using adaptations by the 31st of July. 
So if you're still working with learners and you're still going to be working with them over the next month or so to get everything completed, that's not a problem. And if you go past uh, the end of July, still working and to get everything in, that's not a problem. As long as you let us know by the end of July, that's what you are doing. So yes, there are forms for you to complete. So there's a submission process to go through. There's sent a declaration form you need to complete um, to meet the criteria and what you can do. You need the spreadsheet um, of what submissions that you, you are doing and what your intentions are. Um, and all of those details, again, can be found on our website. Um, you will need to scroll down towards the bottom of the page to find the links are on the mitigation page to find the links to some of these documents, but they are all there. I can assure you, um, I have had those questions and I have checked myself personally. Uh, thing you'll need to do is also need to uh, start thinking about your EQA process. If you do not have to claim status, then we can't issue a result unless you've had uh, a remote visit from an EQA to sign off on the results that you are putting in. So please make sure that you get these documents put out as soon as you possibly can, and also you're talking with uh, the quality team that you deal with normally to get uh, your EQA. In terms of on-program tests for the apprenticeships, some things to think about. Um, so the, the Evolve test will actually be using a web-based system. So you need to let us five days in advance that you want this. We're still trying just to sort out how that will work because what we've got to do is create a URL for you and the apprentice. Uh, well, for it, it goes to you, um, but for each apprentice. Um, we're doing it as a web-based system so that you can use something like Log Me and Go to Meetings or Cisco WebEx, whereby you can share your system with them. They don't have to download anything at all. Uh, and the key thing here, as you can get it, it is one one integration basis. Okay. Um, there's details on how to do that behind this link, so the technical guidance. And how to on remote invigilation. Um, they will need a laptop, obviously, to take the test, but they will also need a another device um, that needs to be set up in order that you can see the whole room. If you are going to use the remote invigilation, then you need to make sure you're using people who have been trained as invigilators who do understand the invigilation process. Uh, the test needs to be uh, taken under exam condition, and it goes back to what I was saying about um, your learners living in a household where there may be other people working or siblings. You know, they need to have access to these devices and be in an environment where they're not going to be disturbed. They can't be doing it at the kitchen table or in the dining room where other people are going to be wandering in or wandering around past them while they're trying to undertake these tests. So please bear that in mind uh, when you're looking at using the remote invigilation. In terms of submission dates, so as I've said, in terms of adaptation for MVQs, VRQs, you need to let us know by the 31st of July that that is what you're going to do. You need to complete those documents and get those to us. But the final results and claims don't need to be, you've got right up until the end of September to do that. However, for those areas where there are calculated results, <coughs> uh, functional skills, essential skills in Northern Ireland and Wales, uh, and the technicals, we need those results in by the 26th of June. Um, there have been update emails being sent out to people. Um, the banners on our websites are all now shouting about that as well. Because what we want to do is we want to get the results out as per the date shown here. So, functional skills. Uh, 
by the end of July. Uh, essential skills, Northern Ireland and Wales, again, by the end of July. For the technical skills, level three, we want those out by the 3rd of August. Two centres and candidates. For the level twos, uh, technicals, we will send out the results to the centres by the 19th. Uh, and to the candidates uh, by the 20th of August. That also includes level two VRQs where we've had the results in um, for those uh, by the 26th of June uh, and possibly by the end of July. For core maths, extended projects and level three VRQs, we're hoping we can issue the bulk of the results um, out by the 13th of August. Again, it all depends on how quickly you get some of that information to us. In terms of the skills process, um, I, I, I think this can be summed up a few words. Basically, there is one. You are telling us what the result is. So any appeal that you put in, you will be appealing against your own results. So if you fail a student and say, why didn't City and Guild pass it? the student, we're not seeing anything. We're not asking you to send anything to us. We're not remarking it. We're not moderating it. We are taking your result and putting that through as the result okay there is a there is a, a potential appeals process if you are doing technicals because clearly um, you could have sent us in a result for the project that they will have done uh, and we will have seen that project and therefore we may well have moderated that uh, and changed the overall decision but we won't have changed the decision against the exam that they won't have taken uh, because again, we'll take uh, that result from you. If you have any questions about that or you feel that you want to appeal, then we do have a full appeals process that you are entitled to go through. But as I say, just remember um, for the VRQs, MVQs, and also for those people using uh, the mitigation of the report and the Q&A uh, for on program qualifications, you are giving us the result. OK, we are not making that decision. In terms of information, uh, so the latest City and Guilds update, as I say, I'm going to keep showing you this mitigation link. Uh, it is there. It will take you to that page. Please scroll down, find the documents uh, under the red tab for digital and IT. Uh, and the technical guidance and how to for the remote invigilation. Please check that all out uh, and what it is you have to do. <coughs> in terms of other information that we specifically are doing for the digital skills side, um, please use this link to our updates and webinars where you find a number of webinars um, that we've done in the past. Recorded, they are uploaded there. There's also newsletters. There's a hashtag update that was sent out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, some changes that happened then. There's also um, the QA sessions that have come out from the last two webinars that we've done. Uh, the first one was a webinar, but we put The last one was about mitigation, uh, and obviously I would the questions uh, are able to answer, and even though we are, and write those up and add that to that document. So I'm just going to add the quick Q and A sessions to that document, so you will be able to see the history uh, of where we come from. Those questions or some of the answers to those questions might have changed over time due to what is happening. Um, both behind the guild and to regulators, etc. If you need further advice and information, please contact our centre support people. Uh, via either of these two emails um, and they will log those questions. They might have to send them through um, to me 
um, or you know if it's other industry sectors to the relevant technical advisor um, but it does mean that we can keep a log of them some of the simpler questions uh, they may be able to answer straight away because they've heard uh, heard the question a number of times uh, and, and help you on your way you can phone them um, however you know small word of warning it is 7p a minute uh, if you do do the phone call um, but you know again check the COVID-19 page check the EPA pages check the mitigation pages these are being regularly updated So uh, finally, again, for people on apprenticeship standards uh, in terms of MS assessment, um, we have the dispensation from NSAR and IFATE, uh, so the synoptic projects can be taken from home. They don't have to be supervised. You don't have to sit and watch somebody for three days or four days or five days, but you have to tell us that is what you are going to do, and you have to get them to keep time of their activity. They cannot have longer to do the projects than stated in the standard. So infrastructure technician is three days, digital marketer, four days, network engineer, five days. So they have to stick to those. They cannot do the project over a weekend. It has to be done in normal standard working time. The only caveat to that is obviously if they work a shift pattern where they might work four days on, four days off, if it so happens that when you want to schedule the project, uh, they'd be working Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, well, then so be it. Um, they, would, they would do the project during that time. Um, they don't necessarily have to do it for consecutive days, but they are only allowed up to four days for digital marketer, for example. Um, so that's why you need to tie them. In terms of managing it, our suggested management a technique, uh, and it's not from us, this came from a couple of centers who are already doing this, uh, is schedule with them when they are going to be working on the project. Uh, it also allows you then to set a deadline of when you need that by, because remember all evidence uh, for apprenticeship um, and the EPA has to be with us two weeks prior to the interview. So if you work out a schedule with them, uh, it also means that you can drop in on them from time to time and see how they're getting on. You can't help them, but you can just make sure that everything is going according to their plans uh, and that they will meet the deadline that you have set. Now, if that deadline is the is at the end of the period of, say, four days for digital marketers, so the allowance for that, then you can't let them go over it. Um, but you know you, they might have said they're going to finish earlier than that. So it's just making sure that you're keeping an eye on them. The two forms that you need, so the declaration to us and a sheet to help you with timing or them with the timing uh, is on the digital updates page, okay? Um, you do need to send that declaration with the name of the apprentices that are going to be doing this. And you need to send that into the EPA team and they will put that against the portal record for that apprentice. So I'm gonna stop uh, at that point uh, and say, Dom, do we have any questions? We do, Ken. We've just got one question at the moment. Um, bear with me. Of course, the, uh, they do disappear. Uh, do we need to inform City and Girls uh, about the remote installation by completing the adaptation form? Um, so, so yes, there, w there is a procedure for doing that. Um, they're just about to reload it up onto the website to include the extra uh, items that are within qualifications rather than um, the EPA uh, programs. So Dom, as you will know, uh, in business, there is a, 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 a multiple choice online test. Qualifications, the same process 
likely to be observed uh, and the website is being updated to allow people to do that. No more questions today, it's Ken. Okay, so I'll move. So one of the things that we know is gonna start happening, especially now that the government are looking to reduce the social distancing space, will be the return to face-to-face uh, -face assessment. So we've sent as reopening um, and setting up to, to allow for doing uh, assessment work or even teaching back on the apprentices or apprentices returning to work um, and how uh, evidence may be being collected for them or going in and doing observations etc. Um, so SEAL needs you to complete risk assessment. Um, though you are doing the work to submit to us you know, you and your apprentice, the employers, uh, or your learners on a VRQ or MVQ, if you're bringing them back in, you need to show to us that you are doing it in a safe environment. I was going to put up the big long list of, of things that you need to go through, um, but you'll find it uh, at the back of the link that's at the bottom of the page. Uh, if we have any um, so for assessors and IEPAs or apprentices, um, on the day they can still, if they don't think uh, that the environment is safe for them to carry on, so if it were doing the synoptic project over four days, either back in the workplace or at a training provider's premises, if they didn't think it was um, safe to do so, then um, you know they, they can call a halt, but there it won't be deemed a fail. Um, and it, it, there, there will be you know, no penalties uh, for doing that sort of thing. Or if um, the IEPA interview is normally done face to face, again, if it can't happen because it's deemed that the environment is, is uh, too risky to actually do that, then again, we, we won't count that as a fail. Um, we just get all rescheduled. Also, if we do have IEPAs on uh, the system, uh, on the webinar, um, there is a form for you uh, and a set of um, guidance for you to go through as well. So please make sure that you are checking these documents. So looking at uh, support, I'm not gonna do a big sales job. We've mentioned this quite a lot. Um, there are some, again, things that are Emphasize, uh, and that is, you know, please, please keep checking the COVID 19 learning resources, supports, and contact numbers. Okay, it does change, and you'll see possibly slides will show you just how much it changes changes in as, as little as the world. We do have um, some uh, support uh, and materials for people to use uh, while we're still in this remote situation and you know when we get back to some form of normality a lot of this uh, may still be uh, very valuable to you to use. So we have e-learning materials to support the management of COVID-19. We've got, uh, for many sectors, free access to platforms and content to support distance learning. We have some free tools to help an apprentice uh, work with remote assessor um, or to prepare for their point assessment. We do have some paid resources. So if you are a digital marketer, network engineer, or infrastructure technician, we do have products under our Get to Gateway. Uh, product services, um, and if you do want to find out more about those, let us know. We can get some from our actual services team in touch with you to go through those. Uh, one of the other things that we is quite clearly um, a lot of documentation. Uh, where we normally want what, what is called a wet signature uh, is not possible. 
So we are allowing digital signatures, and I'm hoping this will go on forever. Uh, we will allow uh, apprentices to, you know, type in their name um, as long as you, because you're going to be countersigning it to say it really is them that is submitting the work and their employer when they go through EPA and do the EPA declaration will also be doing it. If you do use three separate documents for the declaration, please sure that when you upload those, you send a note to the EPA team to say the signatures are on three separate documents. Sometimes look at one of the documents and go, there's a signature here. Not realizing that it isn't the fact you uploaded the same thing three times, it is three separate signatures, or sorry, three separate signed documents. However, through this uh, method of working, you should be able to get around that because equally, we will take the employer's email as a signature. It has to come from a work email uh, and it has to come um, on for one of the head stationary version, put it that way. Um, obviously, there are uh, products out there that allow for um, digital signatures. Um, here are some solutions. So uh, contractbook.com, Adobe Sign using uh, Acrobat Pro with eSign, uh, and also Docu DocuSign. I am not recommending, and Seeing Guilds is not recommending any of these. Um, these are just ones that I have found um, and get emails from all the time saying, oh, have you thought about using us? So, uh, you know, please explore those. I'm sure there are others. Um, obviously, you can also scan somebody's signature in um, and copy and paste that image onto the bottom of documents as well. All right. So um, you know, please uh, check out all of the things that you can possibly do. Uh, and again, there's a link here that you can check out. In terms of certificates, uh, we are issuing paper certificates at the moment. Again, you know, the issue is sending them to the centers, getting them distributed, etc. Et um, all certificates can be found under, under uh, my service on Wall Gardens. You can print out um, those signatures from there. <clears throat> In terms of um, certificates being uploaded or sent to us or checked um, for on program declarations um, going through to EPA. We will accept PLR evidence, we'll accept candidate history from Ward Garden, we'll accept uh, SIMS or CMIS uh, evidence from your own systems, we'll accept national records of achievement. Um, and one other thing to tell you is uh, in terms of functional skills, we don't have any level twos currently in the digital world, um, but I do know in the business world that obviously the customer service um, products. So if you've got colleagues or you yourself deal with, with that, um, one of the things about customer service was they had to achieve level one. They had to achieve level two. That level two has gone. They only have to be level one in place until the 31st of July. We don't know if that's going to be extended at the moment. As soon as we do, we will let you know. That's why you need to sign up for the email update, because that's how we're dealing with you. People looking for support around EA, uh, we have the EPA success team, EPA support team, they're known by a number of names. Uh, you can get them to give you a call and help you through how you upload things to portal, how you do things uh, in terms of registering or doing the declarations. Please just phone the customer service people and say, can somebody from the EPA customer success team uh, give me a call and take me through some of this? Or you can contact your business account manager um, and they can take you through some of that. You can call the technical advisor. The only thing is we don't tend to see systems and you do. For example, we don't 
the walled garden in the way you do and the way you book and register learners. Okay, so we're not the best people uh, to necessarily help with that, um, but certainly you can get in touch with us and we can get somebody from one of the other teams um, give you a call and help support you. Um, also the EPA partnership managers, um, we're shortly to have somebody uh, working for us uh, in the southwest uh, of England um, coming on to here. So there will be five of those. They can help you with all sorts of things. So if you thought that you'd um, got registered for delivery of products, but it's not showing in your wall garden lists, then these people can help push all those sorts of things forward. If certificates don't seem to be coming through or things seem to get stuck, you had a certificate from us, but you haven't had it from IFA, then these people can sort all of those things out. They can also help you with employers, uh, and they also do work with employer providers as well. Um, so they can they can help with all of those things um, and help push things through uh, wherever possible. In terms of updates from us, um, and I will look to make sure the technology works properly, it, I was getting it working before you joined us today, and I don't know why it decided to play up as soon as you all joined us. Um, we'll be doing uh, an, another session on the 14th of July, uh, 4th of August, and the 25th of August. We're going to look at doing these every three weeks. Uh, unless disasters happen and we need Um, and we will look to make sure this time uh, for Q and A is for all of these as well. Um, also, there are other things going on. So, our digital support Um, around get to take away and around uh, functional skills. Uh, there are a number of sessions behind the links on here. Again, you will get these uh, when we send out the presentation. Um, as you can see, there's uh, sessions for system administrators, assessors, IQAs, um, all user drop-in session for learning assistant. It's also um, to basic get gateway Q and A drop-in sessions, get to gateway and back to basics, the e functional skills. Oh, I did say loads of things we've been hanging out last week. We've been sending out emails. So uh, we our um, from uh, one uh, managing director, uh, and he does send them out uh, every week. So uh, he sent one specifically for England, but he's also sent uh, emails out to um, our colleagues in Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. There's also been an update from our teams gone out. There's been a centre assessment grade submission email sent out to uh, make sure people are aware of the deadline and they're working uh, on those things and uh, getting them ready. And there's also been an email about the EPA return to face to face element assessment. But there is more. So we've updated a number of things on our. So, uh, uh, the, 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 the,
to the there. The technical advisor page has been updated. We have a couple of uh, advisor joints, uh, and, and so their details now on the system uh, as well. Uh, the home page from Wall Garden Manor, raising awareness and reminding the centers of the 26th June deadline has been done. There's been mitigation updates, 12 sector webinars. Uh, recordings have been uh, put onto the COVID mitigation page. Uh, and we will get the previous recording up there and the recording of this, um, as long as it has recorded, up there as well. Um, and there's been an update list of qualifications loaded into the mitigation website uh, and the web copy of the spreadsheet. Uh, where there have been some, some errors or things have changed weeks. There's more. So, um, talking to folks, some. Approaches list uh, has been pulled into a document format and uploaded. New face to face assessment uh, has been uploaded, i.e., forms have been uploaded, and the new center forms have been built now live on the web if you intend to go face to face. So, as you can see in those three slides, things are happening. Very, very fast, um, and, and you just need to keep checking these pages on a regular basis. So, that's the end of our update. Uh, if there are any more questions, I'll take this now. There are, okay, there's a few, um, specifically around 754013. Level three diploma in CT systems and principles for IT professionals. First question uh, For this qualification, are all evolved tests now a calculated to grade and not adapted? Uh, so, 14 it adaptation. So, uh, you need to, if you check the mitigation uh, document, it will it lists all of the units. Uh, and it will list exactly what you have to do uh, against those units. Um, but 74013, you've to add action. Uh, so it is down to your assessment and judgment uh, on those products. There is um, 7540 again uh, in relation to recording and, adapt adapt and adaptation. A report indicating a PD or QA, a witness testimony, will this suffice? Uh, as, uh, so you, you, you need the witness testimony uh, um, or, or the report. You, I mean, you've got to audit their work so that you can actually state where the evidence uh, can be found to prove that you know your judgment is based on seeing them um, do something or uh, formative tests that you may have given them um, prior to uh, the 20th of March um, and then the Q&A session to, to round that off. And we are asking for that Q&A or that PD professional discussion to be recorded and for you to keep that evidence. You know, that, that's what we need. Uh, and my shout out to Wiltshire Colleges because they've they are working in 754013. Uh, they had three outstanding units with some of their uh, learners. Um, they put in place uh, a set of questions to ask. Um, they've already done the audit of, of most of the students that they, they want to use. So, yeah, 
it is is you just keeping that uh, so that when an EQA comes in, your, uh, and also your IQA signing it off to say, you know, we have sound evidence to base our result. Mike, thanks, Ken. Might be a little bit of confusion in the next one, but uh, I'm sure you can explain. For EPA dispensation, is the deadline for notification 26th of June or 31st of July? Uh, no. So for for uh, for EPA, uh, all bets are off. You know, just keep working as you normally would. Um, clearly, uh, you are many apprentices are on roll on roll off programs so an apprentice could have started yesterday they could have started six weeks ago maybe just taking their first on program test or um, they could have been doing starting um, the EPA declaration could have happened um, at the end of April and it's just coming up towards interview for, for apprenticeships for the apprenticeship standards uh, there is no expectation that um, the 31st of July or summer, the end of the academic year, whatever you want to call it, um, is a finite date. Thanks, Ken. Uh, same questions popped up again as previously. Um, 7540 again for this qualification are all evolved tests, not a calculator, to create not, not adaptation. I think you answered that previously, saying that they are adaptation. Yes. Uh, however, you know, I was on holiday last week. I didn't check the document yesterday. I'll be honest about it. So please just make sure nobody has changed the document. But we did set them all for adaptation. Uh, next question. Does the risk assessment for have to be completed to cover just the city and guilds assessors, i.e. IEPAs, not providers or assessors? So if this is for face to face, then that risk, uh, then that risk assessment you're doing isn't uh, isn't for us. It is for you uh, and your learners. Uh, and if it's apprentices, obviously for you, the apprentice and the employer, to make sure they're doing okay. Um, there is a separate IPA, a risk assessment and declaration form for them to complete to say that they are happy where they are involved in a face-to-face -face, um, interview. Uh, we don't have that in, in, in the digital world. Um, so in terms of assessment, a face-to-face -face assessment, it is about you showing us that you have done everything that you are required to do and that the government um, and any legislation expect you to and have in place uh, in order for you to return back to um, your normal training environments. And that's it, Ken. So uh, thank you, Dom. Um, thank you all for the technical issue here. Um, no idea why uh, it didn't want to play ball today. He was absolutely happy last time we did one of these. Um, so my final uh, is just to say, you know, uh, if you do have questions, do you have circumstances that you think might be a bit odd, I'm going to check as well for today. If then please drop us an email. We can arrange uh, a phone call consultation, or Teams consultation, or Skype consultation, or Zoom, or whatever uh, method you wish to use. Uh, so, you know, there is apprenticeship at cityandguilds.com if you want to uh, those people about things to do with apprenticeships uh, in more generally. I COVID-19 page, please make sure you are checking it, keep checking it, going to keep playing it, get on there, it changes as you've seen quite a lot uh, in a matter of days. Uh, there's the Apprenticeship Hub, you'll find a lot of documentation on there, especially documents around endpoint assessment, so check the document library there, it does go through how to register, how to do the declaration, there is a document around how to upload things to portal as well and you know stay up to date with us keep uh, notifications coming to you personally by signing up for the email updates we have found that 
Um, we're getting emails from people who don't know about web who don't know about the things that are going on behind the scenes because they're going only to one central source and not being passed on. The easiest way to stop that happening is for you personally to get onto that email update. Tom for being there and supporting me uh, and keeping things going and thank you to all of you uh, and we look forward to seeing you uh, later in uh, in July um, when hopefully we won't have any of these technical issues and um, we will start seeing the world returning to some sort of normality. Thank you all, look forward to seeing you uh, in person at some time in the future. Thank you.